Thank you so much, everyone. Well, I came here today to tell you a secret. And this secret is about all of you. All of you in this room are bilingual. And not all of you, but so are the 8 million people around the world. This means that you speak two different languages. Even those ones who think they speak one. Well, let me clarify your doubts for those of you who are, who are having the doubts. Well, I presume you have, you speak your native language, right? Well, there's another language that you don't only speak, but that you carry with you everywhere you go, in whatever thing you do. And this is the language of DNA. This is the language that contains the shortest alphabet. In fact, it only consists of four letters, A, T, C, and G. Yet, it's the longest language that exists, because every single cell of our body contains approximately two feet of DNA. It is estimated that the human body contains about 37 to 50 trillion cells. For those of you who are not familiar with cells, these are the smallest unit of life. Without the cells, we would not exist. Because cells make tissues, which in turn make organs, which in turn make the whole organism. It makes us. So if we consider that there are 50 trillion cells, then it means that we have around 100 trillion meters of DNA within the average height of the human body, which is 1.7 meters. How is this possible? Well, the secret lies in the genetic material and how this is packaged. Imagine the DNA as a single thread and it needs to fit in a, sm in a small tiny box. And to do this, it needs to wrap around and around and around. And this is exactly what the DNA does. A DNA wraps around small bodies called histones. And when they do it, it form structures known as nucleosomes, which in turn further coil and wrap up and get compacted in what we call chromatin. But how does this work? Well, let me show you. This is all because we carry the language of DNA with us. So we carry the four letters, A, P, C, G, within us. And it is this arrangement of the alphabet that we carry that gives instructions to our body how to work, how to grow, how to respond. And not only this, but it can also tell us our ancestral history and migration. It can also predict diseases and can tell us which treatment strategies would work best for particular diseases and for particular patients. Thanks to the Human Genome Project, this 13-year international collaboration map all the DNA subunits that are needed to build a human being. Well, why is this important? It is very important because by identifying DNA variation, we can identify which treatment is best for each individual. For example, I may respond differently to a treatment for milk, depending on how the alphabet of the DNA within me is arranged. But not only, we can also predict diseases. And this is the power of personalized medicine. And to show this, I also wanted to link this to a devastating disease, cancer. Cancer is affecting millions of people worldwide. According to the statistics in the UK, unfortunately, 50% of the UK people, 50% of all of us here, will face cancer at some point in our lifetime. And the treatment is pretty standard for everyone. Surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Some people will respond to this treatment, but many people will not, and they will experience severe side effects. And this is because the standard treatment is based on one size fits all approach. But what if we can challenge this? What if we have something different from one size fits all approach? What if we knew everything about you, all your genetic information, 
or your molecular mechanisms, or your microbiome composition, what foods you ate daily, how many times did you exercise, how many hours you slept, and what if we can combine all this information together, your genetic information, your lifestyle, your environment, and design treatments that are specifically for you and only you. And this is personalized medicine, giving the right treatment to the right patient at the right time. Artificial intelligence is playing a key role in precision medicine. Traditionally, medical practices would rely on the expertise of healthcare professionals. However, this is challenging because there is so much information for doctors to stay updated with. And sometimes, medical healthcare practitioners don't have enough time to use the data. The good news is that AI is overcoming this challenge by allowing the healthcare practitioners to have access to all tool of medical data and to utilize it for the better treatment of the patient. So this means that AI is moving the healthcare towards more evidence-based, research-driven. We are using evidence-based evidence research, which means that we are using the best scientific knowledge, the best knowledge of clinical trials, and we are combining this with individualized data taken from patients. That means genetic information from the patients, their medical history. And by doing this, by combining the both things together, we are moving towards more patient-centric and proactive health approach. However, personalized medicine is not only happening on Earth. Why? Apart from, of course, Elon Musk wanting to populate Mars, why should we do research on space? Will it accelerate the research base? Well, to understand this, one must understand the environment in space. And let me show you. So if I throw this ball up, it will come back down. This is due to the downward force of gravity that happens on Earth. The gravitation force will slow the ball going up, it will stop it, and it will cause the move down and fall faster and faster. If I hold Elon Musk and borrow his spacecraft, and if I do exactly the same experiment in space, if I throw this ball up, this will continue to go up in the same velocity, in the same direction. And this is due to microgravity, a condition in which objects appear to be weightless. But how does this matter? How can microgravity revolutionize scientific research? To show this, I would like to take the example of a 3D printer. Many of you, I guess, are familiar with 3D printers. Well, I would like you to envision a scenario where you could 3D print an organ, 3D print a heart, or 3D print a lung. For a printer to work, you need ink. However, in this case, to print an organ, you need a bio-ink in a bio-printer. And the bio-ink is a mix of cells and supporting materials that would allow the bioprinter to print the organs layer by layer. But why in space can this not be done on Earth? Well, the key is due to microgravity in space. The fluid pressure within the organ is distributed evenly. This means that there is no downward force of gravity that pull the organs and therefore they are less likely to collapse as they would otherwise on Earth. And this research opens doors to huge potentials. And if you can envision a scenario where in the future we could grow organs customized for specific patients with your own cells, that would also solve the problem of organ rejection because the body would not recognize it as a foreign material because it's made of pure own cells. To emphasize the power of space research, I would also want to focus on cancer and specifically focus on cancer cell growth. And for this, I want to show you this petri dish. 
which I kind of borrowed from my son. So there's a lot of research that we, as a scientist, doing experiments in vitro, in lab, where we grow cells on a plate, we call them petri dish. And these cells are filled with media, to mimic the media, I've just printed this pink paper. And this media acts like a nutrients for cells. It allows them to grow and divide. And we put this petri dish in an incubator where there are optimal conditions for the cells to grow. And by growing the cells here, we see that cells will grow into dimensionality. And this is in vitro. But what happens in our human body, in reality, is a little bit different. Because cancer cells, for example, they grow in three-dimensionality. And they are often observed as almost spherical. So to compare it, it would be like comparing a data top in three-dimensionality versus a pancake in two-dimensionality. So although they are made of exactly the same things, the fact that the shape is different changes things. And therefore, we cannot conduct experiments as accurately as we would like them to. However, space allows us to grow cells in 3D. This means that a lot of research has been carrying and will be continuing to do in space. A lot of research, not only on cancer, but a cardiac research, osteoporosis, and even understanding drug resistance. Part of these experiments is to understand and help humans to go to Mars and beyond gravity. However, it's important to emphasize that the main reasons why we are conducting these experiments is to understand the cell behavior and understand better the molecular mechanisms of specific diseases. Therefore, they would primarily benefit people on Earth. Therefore, whether this is growing or printing 3D organs, or whether this is conducting experiments in space, one thing is for sure. The future of healthcare is personalized, precise, and even a little intergalactic. Thank you. Thank you.